Assalamu alaikum viewers uh, with the next episode of uh, Ash Talk we will be talking about ISO 17025 um uh, today uh, our guest is Mr Mohammad Aman Mirza uh, welcome Aman thank you very much for taking out time for us and joining us for uh, this meeting and definitely we will be getting uh, valuable information from you today uh, thanks uh, thank you bismillah rahman rahim thank you ashar Yes, Aman. So, uh, just tell us uh, some basics about ISO 17025, Aman. What exactly uh, this is standard is all about? Uh, let me let me explain you the a basic introduction of ISO and starting from ISO, and then I'll we'll, I'll talk about ISO 17025. Well, ISO ISO is an international organization for standardization, as we all know, and that proper that ISO uh, publishes develop. Standards and publication standards. There are 25,000 uh, standards they have developed so far. But uh, this organization, the basic purpose of the organization uh, is to uh, uh, harmonize the international standard. That organization, ISO, was developed in 1946 after the World War II. And after uh, the World War II, 1947, it became operational. Uh, so, uh, 1947. Uh, that organization became operational and uh, it has uh, member countries that participate in the development of their standards. So uh, ISO 17,025, ISO 9001, ISO 14,001, ISO 18, uh, 45,001 and other standards. These are all ISO standards. Some of the standards they have adopted and some of the standards they have developed from the scratch. So this is standard ISO 17,025 uh, is uh, uh, is especially developed for uh, the labs only. So, right. uh, uh, yes. So, uh, uh, the 70,025 is for labs only. And I, uh, like I said, it was developed for uh, the, uh, the harmonization of the, uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the international standard for labs because this talks about the labs. And uh, the labs uh, are, uh, I mean, we have to, harmonize all the labs around the world in order to export. For exporter, it is a, a standard of choice. All right. Uh, Aman, um, like uh, we already have ISO 9001, uh, which is quality management system, which is generic for all the organizations and not limited to any specific industry or in any specific type of uh, organization. So in the presence of uh, ISO 9001, why we basically need uh, ISO 17025 specifically for labs? Uh, the international perspective, because the international perspective, ISO 17025 has an, uh, has, uh, has an international perspective, which means that uh, the WTO wants uh, the pre-trade uh, among the it, among its member countries, so uh, this is not possible easily. So we have two kinds of uh, uh, boundaries and two types of restrictions there. Uh, what you call it? Uh, 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 technical barriers. They are technical barriers and they are non-technical barriers. Okay. So we have to understand these basics uh, to, in order to understand seventeen thousand twenty-five. So WTO wants to. Uh, remove the barriers so the countries can uh, can uh, can uh, uh, can easily export and trade with each other. So that that's a uh, that's a purpose of the standard. Seventeen thousand twenty five uh, is a conformity assessment standard, and a WTO asked the ISO and IFA to develop any standard that can facilitate the international trade among the countries. Right. So uh, there are technical barriers and there are non technical barriers. The technical barriers are all ISO. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, they talks about all the technicalities of the product and testing. So, 17,025. The main purpose of the 17,025 is to remove the technical barriers. So, if, so if for example, if your product is accredited, is tested by an accredited laboratory, that means its results are acceptable worldwide through uh, through, uh, uh, through the agreements uh, among the different number countries. So if you look at the uh, if you look at the hierarchy of the controls, so uh, Pakistan uh, in Pakistan, Pakistan uh, we have Pakistan National Accreditation Council, okay. which is registered with uh, uh, which is registered which is a government body working under the Ministry of Science and Technology, government of Pakistan, and that means uh, it is also uh, 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 certified uh, accredited 
Uh, it is also MRS signatory with uh, Asia Pacific Laboratory Accreditation Corporation, which is above them. They are reporting to, uh, in all technical manners, matters, they are reporting to the APLAC. And APLAC is accredited, is registered, is linked with the International Acc uh, Laboratory Accreditation Corporation, which is okay. in, uh, which is uh, accredited, which is also linked with the uh, I, uh, with the uh, in, uh, International Accreditation Forum, All right. uh, uh, which is working under the uh, uh, w, uh, WTO World uh, World Trade Organization. Man, so, uh, like, if a laboratory wants to implement ISO 17025, what are the main steps uh, to implement this standard? Uh, the main step is uh, that we have to uh, register our lab with the uh, APLA, uh, with the PNAC. Pakistan National Accreditation Council. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, we have Pakistan National, uh, National Accreditation Council. Uh, UK has UCAS, and different countries have different accreditation bodies that are working under their governments. Governments. They are all government bodies. There, we have uh, uh, a body that is working under the Ministry of Science and Technology that is approved by the uh, uh, government, and that is uh, 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 working in Pakistan. And also, Pakistan National Accreditation Council uh, are uh, are auditing uh, uh, the labs within Pakistan and outside Pakistan if uh, uh, in some countries where accreditation services are not available. For example, uh, Qatar does not have the accreditation uh, services available, uh, accreditation bodies available there. So they can, they take and Bahrain, Bahrain has, uh, does not have the accreditation, uh, accredited, uh, uh, accreditation bodies. So they can uh, take help from PNAC, Pakistan National Accreditation Bond. Uh, right. What we have to do as a laboratory, then we have to complete our data documentation and uh, uh, we have to uh, complete our documentation and we have to submit our documentation to PNAC, uh, Pakistan Accreditation Council. Uh, we have to submit them fees. Uh, we have to fill their application form. We have to uh, 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 tell them what uh, our organization name is, our laboratory name is, our uh, status of the entity. Uh, uh, whether we are private entity or public limited company or we are uh, a, a sole proprietorship, whatever status we have, we have to mention with all the scope, with all the documentation they want to know what the, what our what, what is our scope, who is responsible, mm -hmm. who is the technical management, who is the uh, quality management, what is the name of the laboratory. So we have to uh, to 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 submit our all the document together our fees uh, to PNAC. In order for the for PNAC to uh, do the re uh, to, to to do the pre assessment and then the final assessment of the uh, so once we submit them they review our case they review our case and then they give us the date for uh, for for pre assessment once the pre assessment is done they they have, uh, they highlight the non performance of the findings so we have to, uh, uh, to work on those findings we have to close the findings then we come back and we uh, we say that we have closed the findings. Then if you call them, they, they come, they do the proper uh, full assessment with all the technical teams. Uh, they, they have technical person for technical areas. They have management person for management uh, 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 clauses. So they do the complete assessment. They do very stringent audit of the 17,025. And once they do, they, they highlight the non performance again. They give us six, uh, six weeks to, uh, to close the non performances Once we close the non performances uh, satisfactorily, those non conformances are verified by the PNAC, by the technical, by their technical team. And once that uh, that uh, the, the technical team is verified uh, the non conformances they close the non conformances they issue the other uh, accreditation accreditation certificate. So it's a long, lengthy process. It usually takes time. It usually takes uh, lots of uh, money investment. Uh, so lab has to uh, get ready for the long journey to the. Uh, accreditation. So, Aman, um, how much this standard is similar or different from ISO 9001? Uh, 17,025 is a different standard. Its intent is different. 17,025 is uh, is for uh, validity of the technical results, while the uh, 17,001 uh, is about uh, the customer satisfaction. All right. Uh, if you look at the philosophically, the standard has been revised. ISO 17,025 is technically being revised. Okay. The standard has been revised from uh, 2005 version to 2017 version. Okay. And the new thing is uh, the, the whole philosophy has changed because the focus of the standard is about the technicalities more 
than anything else because previously it was uh, it was uh, management standard at the technical standard there were two main clauses of this st uh, standard that once uh, clause 4 which was okay. auditable requirement of the standard that talks about the the management side of the standard like okay. uh, they talk about the report control document control uh, purchasing subcontracting contracting uh, management and uh, things like that and the tech uh, and uh, and the technical was about the testing of personnel uh, their trainings uh, resources testing uh, measurement certainty methods and uh, quality assurance of the results but now the standard has been changed the philosophy is that they they this iso says that uh, the whole standard is about the technicalities not uh, a very small part is the management part so if you look at the standard the purchasing requirement has been updated as externally provided services okay. so if you look at the 9001 this is uh, this is uh, also updated but 70025 is a different standard purchasing means procurement purchasing means that if you are uh, if you are purchasing some chemicals there are technicalities involved so that the standard looks like the same but it is different but the standard has given the flexibility. Seventeen thousand twenty-five says in its clause number eight that if you have, if you are certified or registered with ISO nine thousand one, okay. you can uh, you can uh, uh, you you don't need to uh, redo the eight clause. If you are cer certified or uh, registered with nine thousand one, you have to mention in the uh, accreditation body's application form that you are certified or registered. Okay. Then they will. They will not audit the requirement as such, but they will focus uh, the standard more on technicality because the management side has already been taken care of by the ISO 9001. So these are two standards are uh, are synchronized, uh, and uh, the purpose is to uh, is to uh, remove the uh, the doubling uh, of the requirements, unnecessary documentation, unnecessary rework that as ISO does not want, ISO 70025 does not want to do. They want to focus on the technicalities of their standards. So, Aman, uh, this uh, uh, 17025, when we implement 17025, the audit is done by the accreditation bodies, right? And the other standards, uh, the audit is done by third parties like Veritas, BSI, SGS, Lloyds. Uh, so, why, why this difference is there? Well, those are also ISO standards, and this is also ISO standard. So why for this particular standard audit is done by the accreditation bodies by themselves? Yes, very, very good question, uh, Arshad. Uh, actually, uh, every country has a quality infrastructure. Quality mm -hmm. infrastructure means you have to have the accreditation bodies, you have to have the, the standardization bodies, you have you need to have the uh, uh, you need to have the uh, calibration bodies. You need to have uh, metrological services, you know, testing services. Uh, so these services, these services make uh, what do you call uh, uh, what do you call it uh, um, uh, ecosystem? The ecosystem. They develop an ecosystem of the standardization and quality because quality is not uh, you cannot implement quality in the in the dark uh, or alone. Uh, what do you call uh, management? Uh, 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 says that a, a blue ocean and a red ocean. So you cannot do everything in the blue oceans. You have to uh, you have to be there where the market is there, where the standardization is there, where the infrastructure is there. So you uh, so every country has these infrastructure in order to make sure that the standards are being implemented with a letter in a spirit. So Pakistan has Pakistan National Accreditation Council, which is a government body working under the Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of Pakistan. Their job. Uh, is to make sure that uh, that uh, that the uh, laboratories uh, fulfill the requirement of the 17,025, and they reproduce, produce, and reproduce the standards uh, against the 17,025 requirement in letter in spirit. Uh, when they are sure that that the laboratories can comply those standards, they issue them the accreditation service. But but before them, but before that, uh, they make sure. They, they do very stringent audit again uh, as against the uh, certification bodies because certification bodies usually does not uh, uh, audit very uh, very uh, stringently. But 17,025 is audited by the government of Pakistan, uh, uh, PNAC, Pakistan National Accreditation Council, and in other countries 
they must have the same uh, equivalent accreditation bodies. Uh, so they do the very stringent assessment because they they are answerable to the government because they once they approve the, uh, the laboratory for uh, testing, that means they are, that they approve the laboratory for international testing and their, their results will be reported to the international uh, uh, agencies. Uh, and if the, you if, if I if I'm an exporter and you are importer and you are buying something from me, you don't have to talk about accreditation with uh, about the, my lab accreditation with me. You you have to you will go to the PNAC website or the accreditation body website where the scope is given. So you will see the, my, if I if uh, if if the lab that I use for testing is accredited again seventy thousand twenty five and uh, is the result uh, valid, uh, technically valid, they are producing technical valid results. If they are, they are, they fulfill the requirement, then I'll give the order. And this is one of the, uh, you know, uh, one of the LC requirement for many exporters, uh, uh, because this is the, these are the requirements put forth, mm -hmm. put forth by the buyers from the, from the different, uh, sitting in the different countries. So Aman, very nice. Uh, it's, it's very well understood. Uh, just uh, explain me one thing. Uh, the accreditation is for the lab or accreditation is for a specific test? Sorry? Uh, my question is whether the accreditation is for the whole lab or the accreditation is for a specific test which you are identifying. ISO 17025 focuses on the test because uh, there talks about the technical validity uh, of the results so they focus on the test. We have to mention then that test, a specific test. For example, if I'm exporting the textile uh, garment, then I uh, uh, then uh, shrinkage test. But shrinkage test has many methods. There are ISO method uh, and different organization they produce uh, a standard like uh, ISO, ATCC, ASTM, uh, and other uh, 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 standardization body they produce a standard. But I have to tell the addition body what is the, uh, what method will uh, be will my lab be using exactly? So they uh, so they audit my lab against those specific techniques, those standard, those specific codes, uh, uh, and they will look very detailed, and they will be audited by the technical team of the PNAC. They will be auditing uh, uh, the the requirement of the standards. Uh, this is a conformity assessment standard. This is not like uh, ISO 9001. This is a conformity assessment standard, which means that, the, uh, that my lab, if I'm going for ISO 70025, then I have to make sure that all the, all the requirements of the regulatory bodies, uh, the labor, uh, laboratory uh, accreditation bodies, and the, the customer requirements, I have to fulfill all the requirements, whether it's a regulatory requirement, government requirements, uh, whether it is a uh, customer requirements or my, if I'm working with a, my, my uh, parent company, then I have to fulfill all the, those requirements which are put forth by by, by these standards. So, uh, so in in other words, this is a very detailed standards that requires us to fulfill all the requirement if we want to be accredited to ISO 17025. Uh, very nice, uh, Aman. Uh... Normally, uh, the organizations, the laboratories, they go for the all the testing they are performing, or they go for selective testing for accreditation. Whatever test we do, uh, uh, whatever test we do, we have to mention the application form. The accreditation body uh, give us the application form, and it's available in their websites. Uh, we have to download the application form. We have to fill the application form, and we have to write the specific test and the specific name of the test, a specific commodity, product, uh, the test, the name of the test, and the techniques or the standards that we'll be using, for example, ISO, ASTM, D79. Okay, I'm giving you an example. Okay, so, so auditor will be auditing only those tests that we mentioned in the application forms. Okay. So they'll be they'll testing us, they'll be auditing us, they'll be assessing us, our, our laboratory, again, those techniques and standards, scores, and they'll be giving us a certificate that will be complying according to those uh, uh, standards. So when the certificates comes in, that that certificate will be mentioned, and the, the 
first paper is uh, this uh, the certificate obviously the next is a scope the scope will be mentioned those that that we have, that we have been audited we have, we have been assessed successfully uh, by uh, by pnac and we found that we have we can fulfill the requirement of 17025 and other standards so if we fulfill those requirements only they will be uh, they will be giving us the go ahead and they will be issuing the accreditation uh, uh, for only those tests so, so in short will be accredited against the uh, ISO 17,025, against the test only. All Specific right. Uh, all right. Thank you very much, Aman, uh, for providing us uh, the detailed information about ISO 17025. Uh, viewers, I hope that you have got uh, the basic idea about ISO 17025. Uh, Mr. Aman have explained us uh, the details that this is a laboratory management system standard and this is... Uh, more technical than quality management, which is ISO 9001. And the audit is done by the accreditation bodies in different countries. Uh, they have their own accreditation bodies. In Pakistan, we have PNAC. In UK, they have UCAS. Uh, so there are various accreditation bodies which are available uh, in different parts of the world. They perform the audit and they issue the accreditation for, uh, for these laboratories. And these accreditations are specific to the uh, tests which they are performing. And it's a choice of the organization to go for selective number of tests. Uh, so they can go for all the tests which they are performing, or they can go for those tests which, where they require the accreditation. So uh, thank you very much once again for watching. And if you have any questions, if you require any more clarification or detail uh, from uh, Mohammed Aman Meza, uh, please uh, do write in the comments and we will try our level best to get, uh, get back to you. Uh, thank you very much once again. And thank you very much, Aman once again for joining us.